Welcome. Today, we're diving into one of the oldest and still one of the most dangerous vulnerabilities in software, the buffer overflow. Ever wonder how attackers manage to hijack programs just by sending too much data? Stick around and let's unpack what buffer overflows are, how they happen, and most importantly, how to prevent them. A buffer overflow occurs when a program tries to store more data in a temporary memory area called a buffer than it was designed to hold. Imagine pouring too much water into a glass. The extra water spills everywhere. In computing, that spill can overwrite neighbouring memory, leading to unexpected behaviour, crashes, or even letting attackers execute their own code. Languages like C and C++ are especially prone to this because they don't automatically check buffer boundaries. There are two main types of buffer overflow attacks, stack-based and heap-based. Stack-based overflows are the most common. They happen when data written to a buffer on the call stack overflows and overwrites function return addresses. This can redirect program execution to malicious code. Heap-based overflows, on the other hand, affect memory allocated dynamically. They're a bit trickier to exploit, but can be even more dangerous, especially if they let attackers tamper with important data structures. Let's look at a classic example in C. A function uses the unsafe string copy function to copy input into a buffer that only has space for eight characters. If an attacker sends a longer input, the data spills into adjacent memory, potentially overriding the return address. When the function exits, instead of returning to the correct place, it jumps to the attacker's code. That's how a simple coding mistake can become a full-blown exploit. Here's how a typical buffer overflow attack unfolds. First, the program runs normally, allocating a buffer on the stack. Then, the attacker sends input that's too large, often containing shell code. The overflow happens, overriding the buffer and replacing the return address with the address of the shell code. When the function returns, it jumps right into the attacker's code instead of going back to where it should. Just like that, game over. Buffer overflow attacks can have serious impacts. Attackers might run arbitrary code leading to data theft or system takeover. Even without a deliberate attack, overflows can crash apps and cause denial of service. If the app runs with high privileges, a buffer overflow can compromise the entire system, giving attackers a foothold to go even further. So how do we defend against buffer overflows? First, use secure coding functions. Instead of using functions that don't check the size of what you're copying, pick ones that do, like using safer string functions that limit how much data you handle at a time. This way, you avoid writing past the end of your buffer. Second, always validate input. Check lengths, sanitize formats, and never trust external data blindly. Third, enable compiler protections like ASLR, DEP, and Stack Canaries. These features make it harder for attackers to predict memory addresses or inject code successfully. Buffer overflows are still around after decades because of one thing improper memory management. With careful coding, input validation, and modern compiler features, you can keep your app safe. Remember, prevention is always easier than patching a breach. Here we have a simulation of an enterprise application with a simple newsletter sign-up button. This app is built using Python for the front end and C++ in the back end. First, I'll enter a real email to confirm the app is working. Great, now I have crafted a fuzzer with a word list to insert payloads and find where the app will crash. Okay, we found a payload, let's copy it into the app. And it crashed, you can see the message segmentation fault. Here in Ghidra, we can clearly see the vulnerable code. The developer created a fixed size buffer just 64 bytes, but then use string copy to copy user input into it without checking the input's length. This single line of code allows an attacker to crash the application or in some cases, even take control of it. That's why you should never use unsafe function. Always validate your input and use safe alternatives with proper bounds checking. 
Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into buffer overflows. If this helped you understand how they work and how to stop them, give this video a like and subscribe for more cybersecurity insights. And hey, tell me in the comments, have you ever found a buffer overflow bug in the wild? Let's keep learning together.